Photography is a strong tool, a propaganda device, and a weapon for the defense of the environment, and therefore for the fostering of a healthy human race, and even very likely for its survival. Elliot Porter, 1962. Elliot Porter is a self-taught black and white and color photographer born in 1901. After receiving a medical degree from Harvard, Elliot turned what he considered a hobby to a full-time profession after acclaimed photographer and artist Alfred Stiglitz took interest in his photographs after providing his first New York City gallery. His use of a small Linhoff camera to create black and white imagery evolved in the 1940s when he taught himself how to work in the world of color using a new dye transfer technique produced by Kodak. Porter's reputation peaked when the Sierra Club published his book of photographs honoring Henry David Thoreau, accompanied by natural scenery from various locations in the United States, including New England and Glen County, Utah. Rather than focusing on the traditional large grand views of nature, Porter enjoyed honing in on the smaller, often overlooked scenes in his photography. This image, titled Moss Waterfall Cinders, was created in 1972 as a dye transfer print. What would seem to passers-by as a simple trickling stream creates an aesthetically evaluative piece that combines use of symmetry between the two mossy banks, bold contrasting colors, and a low perspective to create a beautiful image that seems larger than reality. I chose this image first to show what made Porter famous, being able to find natural beauty in the smallest of scenes. Taking this rare skill to an even deeper level can be found in this photograph, titled Peeling Birch Bark, Great Spruce Head Island, Maine, shot in the summer of 1969. Although we all walk by dozens of trees that look similar to this one each day, hardly anyone stops to examine the minute detail and artistic value of things that we're used to seeing. Gr Growing up in New England meant that Porter had to find new ways to look at the things that he saw every day, and this image is an embodiment of that notion. Using the analogous colors of orange, yellow, and green, the bark comes to life, asking viewers to take a closer look the next time they are outside. This particular image could have been taken in White Clay Creek, which is a central tenet of what Elliot Porter's prerogative is in his images. However, this image is actually from New Hampshire, and is titled Pond, Grass, and Lily Pads, taken in 1952. In his most famous collection, In Wildness is the Preservation of the World, published by the Sierra Club in 1962, this image, along with many others similar to it, shows the universality of many of the landscapes that we share from coast to coast. It uses very diffuse lighting to blend all the subtle greens and grays together, creating an even more ambiguous scene of a simple pond. The reflectivity of the clouds creates a dreamlike atmosphere to the image, furthering the ability to connect to this photo on a personal level. Another use of reflectivity can be found in the image Redbud Trees and Bottomland near Red River Gorge, Kentucky. This print was created in 1979. The small redbud tree sapling is the title focus of the piece, taking advantage of the top right third of the image. However, the viewer quickly will have their attention diverted to the contrasting hues of orange and silhouettes cast from the walls of the canyon and tree. In evaluating these seemingly simple scenes, his wish was that people would begin to find these same landscapes under their noses and begin to care about the world around them. His message was so strong that he is credited with helping convince JFK to pass the Wilderness Act in 1964 through images similar to this one. Porter challenges all to find solace in the habitat they are a part of, no matter how small or seemingly barren.